Welcome to Leadership and Life Chat with your hosts, me, Becky Ames. And me, Mark Curtis. In each episode, we'll be illustrating how success in leadership is inextricably linked with success in life. Whether it's leadership in business, society, family or friends, we're all leaders. Using our experiences and a range of expert guests, we'll share secrets to boosting your health, wealth and self. So let's get on with the show. Listeners of the show will know that we aim to provide thought-provoking content about how you can boost your health, wealth and self. Today, we're going to be chatting about how charitable volunteering can achieve all three. Now, of course, charities across the world could not operate without volunteers. They play a massive role. But what about the benefits to the individual of volunteering and to business leaders who are able to promote volunteering to their teams as part of their overall offering? Today, we are joined by Laura Holland and Nicola McCall from the charity Voluntary Norfolk to talk about how volunteering can benefit us in so many ways. Uh, Laura and Nicola, welcome to the show. To start off, would you like to tell us a little about your different roles in the charity? Because I know they, they are quite different, aren't they? So, Laura, if you'd like to kick off for us. Yeah, certainly. So uh, my main role is um, to look after the Get Involved uh, volunteering platform. Um, so what that is, is a bit like an in- Indeed for voluntary roles. Um, and it matches volunteers to organisations and the wonderful roles that they've got across the county. Um, I also support organisations in finding um, employer supported volunteering roles. Um, Some organisations might know that as corporate responsibility, um, but it's matching organisations with um, local charities that are looking for that little bit of um, extra help. We also support volunteers more on a one-to-one level if they're not sure what they'd like to do and just to sort of encourage them to give volunteering a try and um, mention the amazing benefits it has as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura. And Nicola, I know your role's slightly different, isn't it? Yeah, um, I work for Voluntary Norfolk, but I work for Voluntary Norfolk through CBR Business Solutions, which is the business arm of Voluntary Norfolk. We offer um, services out to uh, VCSE, and also some small medium employers um, and we offer our um, HR service which I am one of the HR consultants for, um, DBS um, and also payroll and we have clients across um, the country apart from Scotland where HR law tends, to, well employment law tends to be different. <laughs> and you said the VCSE so that's just for the listeners. Could Voluntary you yeah, um, and, and Laurie might have to help me because I always get confused on this one. Voluntary um, community and social enterprise. Social enterprise. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's lots of letters flying around all the time, isn't there? And yes. It's hard to yeah, keep acronyms. up with what yeah. they are. Um, brilliant. Thank you both very much for being with us today. So um, before the show, we were talking about how there's so many different reasons why people may volunteer and everyone gets something different out of it. And we really want to focus on how it can boost our own um, health and self, but also as leaders in all aspects of our lives. So could you sort of give us an insight into how um, what you're seeing in terms of reasons why people volunteer? So reasons for volunteering does vary um, quite a lot in regards to sort of employees and volunteering. A lot of it is to connection to their local community sharing skills maybe like professional skills um, and developing um, skills that maybe their employment and their sort of development opportunities within their organization doesn't always touch on Um, and it's a great way to sort of do that in a more informal environment so that's sort of the main ones really so laura it's interesting isn't it because i think the cynical out there would think well you mentioned csr so corporate social responsibility and and cynical people would say well yeah of course you know people do the volunteering just to tick a box and um you know just be able to put on their website hey we volunteer but but from what you were saying there around developing skills that there's so much more to it isn't there than than just ticking a box for for csr purposes yeah definitely um and we've noticed a great sort of deal in sort of like that team building aspect of when you've got that professional um, environment at work, especially if you're based in an office altogether. And sometimes if you're not, if you're home working and the only time you see your members of the team is on a screen, then maybe getting out, doing a a little bit of good in the community um, and seeing those people in a more natural environment, not just natural from like trees and bushes, but natural as Mm. their their Mm -hmm. personality wise. Um, It just sort of brings that whole sort of team to life. Um, and that can that can really have some wonderful benefits in regards to sort of the the how that team works together professionally. 
Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, seeing seeing your um, colleagues and line managers in a different perspective um, enables you to see the whole person. And certainly, um, when you come back to the workplace, you have a different perspective, a different conversation because you've you've done something outside outside in the community. You've shared an experience that develops just a different conversation and possibly a different way of working with each other and also connection and also sharing yeah I really, I really like the team building aspect because I think traditionally when you think of team building you know we all go and build a raft or we have to fall backwards <laughs> off a table and hope someone catches us and stuff and, and and it feels a bit false when you're doing things like that where you know if, if you've got a commonality around something you're volunteering and doing because it's what you want to do as you say you see people in the in a natural light you may be you connect at a very different level to when you're on a forced corporate sort of team building day almost yeah definitely and it's it's being sort of in that outdoors environment as well and a lot of the team building volunteer um, roles do tend to be outdoors just because that's where that there is more capacity for organizations to be able to um to sort of accommodate that um but it is this sort of like walking and talking while you're doing a litter mm. pick, noticing what's around you, maybe having a little bit of small talk as well. And and like Nicola says, it's really sort of getting to know your team and seeing them as as, a, as another human, um, as not just a, a another sort of um, person sitting at a desk. It does make a lot of difference. And also, I think seeing somebody outside in a different um, environment, it may, as a manager, it gives you an opportunity to see something that you didn't know about your team member and a strength that you weren't aware of. And actually, you know that that's something you can talk to them about, look at how you can use that within the business environment. And, and you know, a, also for an employee, seeing a line manager with a different perspective is, is key in terms of the working relationship. Yeah, I was going to say, Nicola, it's so important in these... Um, scenarios isn't it that all all people in the team get involved particularly the leaders so that they are seen mm. to be you know really walking the talk rather than just saying what a great thing it would be for the team to do and then staying in the nice warm office and not doing it themselves and it really does show them in a different light to, to the team doesn't it oh I, I, I definitely agree if you see somebody out in muddy wellies doing the same thing that you're doing and that's the boss you're going to have a different different point of view on them and um, know that they're human. Uh, they're not somebody just hiding in an office or hidden away in meetings constantly or not able to talk to. That just opens up a communication line, which, you know, I, I think uh, being able to talk from openly with, with a senior manager, just to be able to say hi, even um, past the time of day, know who they are. It, it opens up conversations that may never have normally happened within the workplace and also um, that communication can be key to sharing of um, learning and also sharing of information within the organisation. Mm. Because everyone will have different reasons for wanting to get involved with any particular charity won't they so you know often that side of things will come out too that you find out things about people that you would never have had the opportunity mm. to to talk about otherwise and actually getting to know your team and taking an interest in them and each other so important in in you know what makes us really work well as as human beings isn't it it's definitely one of the um important factors in well-being i think in the workplace the, these days for, um certainly after covid and just this need to reconnect um certainly where um where you know that person you you hear them you see them in different participation roles within the organization and externally and within something such as um, uh, employer supported um, volunteering it it opens up um, that trust element that's very mm. important within the employee contract um, this 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 unwritten rule of I trust you you trust me because I've seen you in participating in different working environments and have you seen a shift since the pandemic and we you know hate to focus on that but you know working practices have changed and have you seen a shift in people's attitudes perhaps need to do um volunteering exercises as teams is there a greater need i guess i'm asking yeah there's definitely been um quite a significant spike in um inquiries from organizations um and it's it's very much comes from the team directly rather than the, the main organization um, and a lot of that is from teams that don't all work together some are home based some are office based some are based at a different location around the county um, and it's a it's a good opportunity for them to meet their their corporate responsibility goals to get their team together to give the team a bit of a morale boost 
a break from the office. Um, so yeah, I've, my, my inquiries are probably up about four times as much as they were for the team um, activities. The individual ones, um, we don't see um, as much because they come through sort of separately and it's using a personal email address. So in, unless they tell me that's what they're looking for, we don't always know. Um, but yeah, in regards to the team activities, they want to be outdoors, they want to be together. Um, and that's definitely increased in the last 12 months. So, so I was just going to say, like, what, what what are the popular what are the popular things you see? Because I think everyone listening to this is going to have their own picture of what volunteering means, whether it be a litter pick or you know, I think volunteering. I think people at a national trust property. You know, so so do 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 you see any like common? What are the most common things you see around volunteering in terms of the type of activities? Um, the most common theme is they all want to do something outdoors. They'd like to do something that's got um, sort of a, quite a significant impact in the small amount of time that they're able to give, which might only be one full day. Um, so things like tree planting, something that they can revisit and see what they've done over a period of time. That's really popular. Um, litter picks are really popular, um, especially as some organisations haven't got the capacity to cope with large numbers. And some teams are sort of 20, 30 and 40 people. Um, and so for them to be able to arrange their own litter pick to get permission from the local, cari the, the local parish council um, and to go and do that together, um, that's really popular as well because it's something that needs sort of a little less organisation. So, and, and they tend to be, like you mentioned, they're big groups and I guess that varies hugely, but do the bigger groups get as much out of it? I mean, I guess in the, in the reality of it, when you're doing a litter pick, you cover a much larger area and that's great. Um, but you know in terms of ha the benefits that the team will actually get from that activity um, what do, what do you see there yeah it varies greatly on what is available to do and that depends on the time of year as well so a lot mm. of people want to do something in the summer and there's not an awful lot needed in the summer because it's all been done sort of tail end of of the winter in the spring so yeah it's hard to sort of try and find um, people something that's going to have that measurable impact um, but with the larger groups we tend to get in touch with the larger organizations things like rivers trust national trust um, and, and the larger sites that that we know have big jobs that are maybe only once or twice a year and that can accommodate those numbers and again so they can revisit a year later and see the impact of what they've done but with the smaller groups it's a lot easier to place because they can do things in the local sort of broads areas and the country parks yeah. um, and it looks like they've done a lot more because it's a smaller area but and I, I think the key you've said there for me Laura is about having an impact isn't it and that's so important that we're getting that personal aspect there that we can actually see that we've done something to make a difference and that's that's such a massive part of volunteering isn't it that people need to have that they want to feel like they've achieved something that their time has been usefully needed possibly not you know no particular skills needed so it doesn't inhibit other you know anyone in the team from getting involved but that you've actually done something yeah and that's one of the main draws of, of people volunteering in general is they want to be part of something they want to have that sense of purpose um, and they want to feel like they've, they've made an impact sometimes that's just from one visit or sometimes that's an ongoing effort um, and so you find a lot of we try and encourage um, organizations to do like the obligatory before and after pictures just so it might not feel like they've done a lot but when they actually look back on what they've done they've they've achieved a, a substantial amount in a short amount of time and do you find that teams return do they want to make it something regular yeah quite often there's a few organizations that have got regular partnerships with um local charities so we we will hear about them in sort of local news and because um we've sort of come across like networking events where they've um mentioned it but um yeah i think if they really enjoy it they do tend to want to go back to the same thing because they know what they're going to be doing they know the teams that are going to be supporting them they really enjoyed it had good feedback last time and yeah they will keep going yeah and like you say they, they've made an impact they feel like they've made a difference it's, again picking up on a point you just made there the sense of purpose so important isn't it whether it's a, a team volunteering exercise or as an individual it certainly sounds like that is a massive reason for people wanting to get involved in volunteering especially with the sort of connection to well-being um to be able to sort of be part of something to feel like you you've um, got something to to do that routine um it's it's a really lovely sort of boost to to your mental health in general so we're talking about we're obviously all based in the uk here and we're talking about uk that the, the listenership to this podcast is, is worldwide how 
how does maybe volunteering in the UK is it is it the say is it a kind of global thing? Do do businesses and leaders all over the world get involved in this, or, or, or do you do you know if there's any differences between say the UK and, and other parts of the world with volunteering? It does vary quite greatly. Um, I know I have quite a close relationship with um, businesses based in um, the Netherlands. Our volunteering portal is um, is partnered with a, a Dutch startup um, business called Deedmob mm. um, and they've got a very good um, platform in the Netherlands that does a, a very similar thing that what we've discussed is partner, partnering those organisations with um, charities that have a need and that might be that they want someone to run a workshop on sort of like HR for instance or it might be that they want some someone to be a befriender for half an hour a week um, so they've got a very, very similar sort of setup in the Netherlands, mm. but I think it does it does vary all over the world. I know America are very, very into volunteering. They really encourage everybody to get involved, and I know they've got um, uh, platforms that are similar to ours. I've, I've on a couple of occasions I've had invitations over to uh, Virginia um, to do talks on volunteering because they got us muddled up with um, the Norfolk that's there and. The oh of yeah, of course. <laughs> they they have a, a massive, massive, massive sort of volunteering convention um, mm. that they wanted us to go and speak at, and it was, it was wonderful. If you're going to fund it, um, they hadn't twigged that we were a different Norfolk, but they are very, <laughs> very into their volunteering in the in the states. Yeah, so so it really is a universal language. Yeah, I mean, just from personal experience, I've lived both in Netherlands and volunteered in the Netherlands. I've lived in the US and volunteered in the US. I've also lived in Ireland and volunteered in Ireland, and they're all very similar um, sets of circumstances. Um, I, I couldn't say what the rest of the world's like, but certainly similarly, platform for volunteering and a requirement for volunteers in, in all these sectors of uh I think it doesn't matter where in the world you are there's going to be charities there's going to be a need mm. and there's going to be um Absolutely. volunteers that can help help support and fill those gaps yeah i mean there's no denying the need is there I, I, it's the motivation for people to want to volunteer and it's not purely because yeah. they want to be involved with a particular charity there are so many aspects to to all the benefits that they will find from volunteering um i know we've we've talked laura before about how people who maybe have been out of the um, workforce for a while or are seeking to get back in can use it to really build their skill set. So whilst a lot of volunteering projects might be relatively unskilled, they, they can use that as a platform to sort of get them to wherever they want to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, volunteering is a great sort of stepping stone back into employment. Um, it might be that you want to eventually work within the, the charity sector um, and so getting a taste of, of what the sort of their day-to-day -day running is like um, is, is a great way to see if that's a good fit for you um, it's wonderful if you've had quite a big career break and you're lacking in confidence mm. or maybe you're not quite sure what you'd like to do then perhaps volunteering is a lovely way to connect to gain that confidence again um, plus there's a lot of organizations that have wonderful wonderful training packages um, and it's a way to sort of get that confidence back to, to connect with the community to connect with the sort of that local sort of um, professional um, area again but to gain gain some skills and qualifications while you're doing it yeah. and like you say it's the sense of purpose isn't it and often as well I guess it gives people structure if it's regular and yeah. you know if, if you're if you're getting if you need to make a change in your life that can be so important can't it to have that that uh, regular activity that that keeps you moving forwards and what about in terms of developing leadership skills? Is that something that you also see from people who volunteer? I mean, we talk about gaining confidence, obviously, but do, do people who, who've been involved for quite some time take on more of a leadership role in those activities, do you see? Quite often the, the longer term regular volunteers um, will be giving sort of like buddying and, and mentoring responsibilities. So they sort of um, take under their wing the new volunteers. So that gives them an element of sort of like leadership that way supporting new starters um, mentoring um, and that's all all really positive stuff that can go on a cv if you're looking to go into um, employment that way but it can also um, support you in your career progressions because it might be that mentoring isn't a professional like development option within your organization mm. but as a volunteering um, role that's something that can be incorporated and and can benefit you pro professionally 
so what what impact so, so just bearing in mind you know we're, we're recording this in um march 23 and you know there's been a few uh, things happening in the last week around the you know, the world economy and you know the banking sector what what impact does the overall economy tend to have on the volunteering sector because i think in my head it's almost like well if if purse strings and businesses start to get tightened it's going to you know contract the volunteering sector is does that happen how, how do you how do you tend to see that playing out and what what do you think is likely to happen maybe over the next 12 months and what would your message be to businesses who are kind of going through this thought process at the moment yeah it's really it's really sort of hard to to gauge what what's going to happen in the next sort of coming weeks and months obviously with the pandemic um, we saw a real steep uptake in volunteering because everybody felt like they wanted to do something. They wanted to help, whether that's mm-hmm. doing something quite sort of what seemed like quite small, doing their neighbour shopping or doing another neighbour shopping, um, to supporting people on the telephone that couldn't have friends and family round. Um, there was literally hundreds and hundreds of applications a day of people wanting to volunteer. And although we've seen similar um, uptake with the the sort of cost of living crisis that has caused some organizations a little bit in a lull of volunteer recruitment because people don't know what their finances are going to be like whether they can take that extra time to do any volunteering Mm -hmm. um, because they might want to do an extra few hours at work they've got the opportunity to overtime they need to heat their home they're going to they're going to choose that over volunteering whereas some people have thought on like sort of the other end of it well actually if i volunteered in a warm space I'm getting to be in that environment. I can I can support other people. I can find out what's available that I could also benefit from and share that knowledge with other people. Um, so it is quite hard. I mean, there, there's still some organisations and it's sort of across the board that are um, struggling with recruitment um, and retention of volunteers. And the cost of living does definitely have um, a significant impact on that. But there's always those people that will, will always try and help, even if it's I'll do something from home then. I'll get on the telephone. I'll do some befriending for uh, an hour or so a week. Um, on, instead of using my car, I'm going to take my, my bicycle and I'm going to go and check out the food bank and see see who I can help deliver for. Um, it's definitely sort of made a, a, made an impact, um, but it's starting to it's starting to creep up again now. We're seeing more applications come through. More people want to get involved. Mm. The themes tend to be the same still. They want this food banks. Um, they want to support other people, support their communities, share a bit of knowledge, um, or um, volunteer with animals, which is always popular no matter what the time of year or whatever crisis is. Yeah, happening. sure. Yeah, but... yeah. So, so that if you like, that's the individual side. So, what, what about the corporate side, where you you know do do the corporates act differently in those kind of environments when you know maybe the economy is uh, looking like it could tank or do do individuals respond differently to organizations i guess is the question i'm trying to ask yeah i think it's actually a really good opportunity for um organizations to um engage with their community to really see what that community needs Mm. and what they can offer as an organization if you've got if you're sort of your insurance professionals you might think oh there's nothing we can we can offer our community we're sort of in like a rural office but there may be small charities that really benefit from that half an hour's chat with an insurance professional about the the cover that that they may or may not need in the future um there's there might be people that that travel the same way as, as the food bank needs deliveries so it's 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 a really good opportunity to sort of engage with the community and just see what they need and how you can support them to open those levels of like mm. communication um and so the community see that organization in a really positive light that they're not just a big building full of um, full of people in in suits, maybe it's they're actually somewhere we can go to to get additional help if we need to. It's interesting, mm. is it, Mark? Because we talk about um, how productivity is a challenge for businesses at the moment. We've seen a real shift, and you know it, there can be a temptation for businesses. I I suspect to be like you know we we can't do um, you know we can't allow people time to do that because there's too much pressure on us as a business. And it it sounds to me certainly like people are still wanting to get involved and they just need to be flexible in how they can do that. There's different ways. It doesn't have to be necessarily a whole day out of the business for the whole team, does it? No, I think there's some um, easy, small wins that can be done. If if there's a conversation that started with a local charity, local um, community project, 
and 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 it is about how can we tailor what we do we can offer that the charity may go actually we hadn't thought of that that would be great you know as, as you say if it's a an insurance company gives some um just let's have a review of what you've got in place and actually that all in half an hour you, you know you're on you're on a good standing but perhaps you might want to look at x y or z that that's a way of giving to a community in a way that actually they may not know how to ask for that so i certainly think where um, charities and organizations in the same community begin to build a relationship with each other and communicate with each other whether that's done through social media or that that first initial startup but putting putting ideas out to um, charity sector from uh, corporate social media might be a starting point mm. but it's about engaging and communicating i think isn't it yeah i mean several of the things you've mentioned so far are probably not what we would automatically have thought of as as being volunteering mm. if you like you know like you say we do think about the litter pick or that kind of thing don't we paint an offense at, at the a charitable building or something but actually offering our time our expertise our knowledge mm. um to people which is you know entirely manageable in terms of it doesn't need to be a whole day but it sounds like it's about businesses talking to the charities to find out what the need is yeah yeah definitely there's quite often a need out there and the charities either don't know how to ask for it like nicola said or they just don't have the budget mm. and they can't afford it so they don't even bother looking so it's really good for organizations to take take sort of the lead on it and say look this is what we do can we provide you any help and certainly more and more um we've seen when we're recruiting or promoting what we can offer as employers that it is something that potential employees are looking for isn't it you know corporate social responsibility what's your policy on that how do you actually live and breathe mm. that is so important in terms of um you know recruiting great people to your business and nicola i know you you work sort of more on the hr side and certainly looking at well-being and things like that it, it's it's an essential isn't it in a lot of ways to be able to offer something certainly when um the tight job market we've got out there at the moment and um more uh employees looking for some organization that will have a conscience that will um fit with their their own um personal uh, conscience as well um certainly they it's one of the the asks that you might see on a, a job prospectus oh we we support co corporate social um, giving we um, employ supported roles these are the activities we take part in if you have ideas we're open to hearing those um, it's that encouragement again to get involved through the organization but also how can we support you in any activity that you're doing from a charitable or social um, responsibility yourself so uh, for ex example some organizations may support what and employees involved in the they may be individually um, involved in a charity or, or as a trustee and how can they support them with time or mm. with resource in that as well yeah trusteeships is something we see a lot as a business actually and, and i think people again forget that that's such a valuable way that you can really mm. support you know being on a board or you know, somewhere in that that fits with what we do day in day out perhaps but um really does add value to the charity and it, it's it's really it's time isn't it more than anything it's not a fundraising activity no. but it's about us giving our time absolutely i think time is is so key yeah and, and nicola so, so from your side everything you were saying there around you know in potential employees team members are, are looking for this stuff within employers now and um, earlier on we sort of talked around you know it shouldn't just be a tick box exercise so presumably people are kind of looking beyond mm. the you know the, the sort of the the uh, marketing fluff on people's website they're actually looking at it going is this congruent with the values of the business you know does this flow all the way through the organization yeah, so absolutely. businesses having very clear vision and values and then the CSR flowing off the back of that so it's all joined up and congruent is presumably pretty important as well absolutely it, it, it's that tick list but it's got to be genuine it's got to be walked with mm. talk in the business and um it, you know we all know if we've gone to a place where we've been promised that the organization is about this sort of set of circumstances and values and then we find out that that's not the truth we know we all move on as quickly um so organizations i think know through um, the access everybody has now on the internet to looking into company history social media mm. reading up on organizations that they can find out very quickly whether th those values are actually mm -hmm. active and uh, genuine yeah 
Yeah. And Becky, you mentioned a, a short while ago around, you know, productivity being a key challenge for probably you know, a lot of business sectors. And, and then you then you start getting into the finer nuances, don't you? you know, wh- what drives productivity and actually mm. having people who feel fully engaged with your brand, with your values, you know, they're going to go the extra mile for your business. So a day out to do this or a yeah. couple of days out to do that is potentially very is very small beer in the scheme of what you're going to get back because people feel so engaged with your business and your brand then. And, and I think it's easy to take productivity back to kind of sort of numbers and digits and make it very sterile, isn't mm. it? But it's it's much more fluid than that. It's much deeper than just that. I think organisations are seeing productivity issues and, and as you say, that engagement level um, for employees, where they feel respected, where they feel seen, where they feel heard is always going to mean that... Um, exercises that are about building those behaviors and those those uh, genuine con- concepts within the organization are just going to be enjoyed undertaken and develop in engagement with what they're doing at work and feeling part of something as well isn't it so important if it feels that sense of community which again you know we really want our teams to feel like they can contribute they can have their um, mm. voices heard like you say I mean I, I really like that being respected seen and heard is so important I think we need to take every opportunity we can to make sure we're encouraging our teams to get involved and productivity can so often come back to the numbers can't it you need to step back don't you and look at the whole not just the output <laughs> yeah so 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 what what is the what is the most bizarre volunteering request that you've had if you can even say it on the podcast (laughs) Uh, what's the strangest weirdest one that you think you've ever seen I don't think it was actually specific Um, I got asked if I could find a group something outside something fabulous maybe wacky but definitely interesting that was what they they asked for litter picking "Mm, wacky (laughs) So, so what did you manage to find to fit with that um, with that brief? Well, that was I can't remember what the, it's. I think it's Bracken where they sort of uh, trample the, the Bracken at one of the the Broads parks. Um, it was along those lines, but they loved it because they were just sort of like stomp, stomp, stomp. Had like hot chocolate and something at lunch, <laughs> talking about it. There's loads on their social media about it, and it was one of those nice ones where you don't just see it once. And that's it. You never hear about about it again. There was still comments like weeks later. Oh, I really enjoyed that. I'm going to go back there and see, like the work that we did, and sort of take my mum back at the weekend. And they really sort of felt like that was a something like really notable and and something to to go home and chat to the family about. It was um it was quite lovely. Yeah. So 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 fun. I mean, that maybe that's a word we yeah. haven't mentioned too much, but you know, make this fun as well. You know, don't make it work. Business and work is quite serious. So actually maybe make the volunteering a bit of fun as well. Yeah, I should have all done it as fancy dress. That would have been good. <laughs> that's what I might suggest next time. Do a litter pick, but you have to dress up. <laughs> have a theme. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would look great on social media and also in a, um, inter- internal communications, won't it, for it would, the rest of the yeah. employees will kind of mm. go, oh, I missed out on that. The- I'm probably going to show my age now, but maybe they should dress up as the Wombles. <laughs> <laughs> if they're doing the litter pick. The yeah. 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 Pro- producer Lizzie may have to put a link in for the listeners about what the Wombles are. <laughs> there, is, there are modern day Wombles, aren't there, as well yeah. now? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. There should be, there should be. So, Mark, what costume would you wear? <laughs> Well, when I when I was a kid, I had an Orinoco um, <laughs> lamp next to my bed, so the best. Uh, I'd go as Orinoco. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> but yeah, you're you're right, Nicola, about in terms of what you can do with that content. Then and, you know, it's great for employer brand, isn't it? It's great for motivating internally and showing, you know, then asking for ideas about what people want to do next, um, and really telling the story of the business, which again comes back to living and breathing those vision and values. Um, so I guess the question is, why wouldn't businesses want to do it? Because it seems like there's so many benefits for them. I think the, the, the barriers that are in place is how do I start, probably? OK. And how do I manage this? I think there's a fear factor about if, if I let this genie out of the, the can, out of the bottle, is this something we can manage as an organisation? Particularly, as you say, when there's productivity, there's budgetary um, issues, there's concerns about people having jobs in the future. You know, it's like, oh, will this be seen as some fluff or not? 
and actually how can I start in a way that's positive and does does benefit my employees my organization but also the charity and I think that's probably key to the communication with um, organizations charitable organizations in the community I don't know Laura what's your thoughts yeah it's it's not as scary as some organizations think mm. i think when they look at sort of an employer supported volunteering program they'll it's the automatic is well who's going to look after it who's going to manage it is it an hr issue yeah is it a management issue how do we record the hours how do we how do staff book it are they insured do we need to do a risk assessment it's just it's yeah. one after the other after the other um and it and can HR be a bit of a minefield <laughs> yeah um, and it can be a bit of a minefield, but there are there are so much help and support out there to sort of get people started. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything massive. It could mm. just be we support our staff to, to volunteer during work hours and let the staff pick their own opportunities um, and just sort of give them the, the allocated sort of time away from their, their desks and their diaries there are there other commitments it doesn't have to be something that the organization necessarily arranges it doesn't have mm. to be those team building exercises for instance it could just be we're going to let you have half an hour a week yeah um mm. if you want to put your headset down from doing insurance calls and and ring someone and be a befriender for for yeah. half an hour it's amazing how much difference that can make um and the conversations that starts with with other team members um yeah. and that's it can be something is what well, seems like as, as small as that but to that person getting that half an hour phone call that means the world yeah so a small seed and and you'd be surprised where it grows and and what it develops and i think you mm. know for somebody who's been on insurance calls all day and they take half an hour out to talk to somebody else that's going to put their mind in a different perspective completely and they'll come back to their work with a different perspective on life generally and think actually now I'm going to get on with this because I'm lucky I've got a job or I appreciate everything I've got I appreciate the fact I'm sitting in a warm place I'm talking to people I'm doing my job yeah and you think like a lot of people will be thinking oh well I just I'd love to do this but I just haven't got time mm. and, and I think probably my challenge back to anyone who thinks I haven't got time is two things firstly just look at how you spend your time and yeah. secondly how much of your time do you waste on social media every day you know when you could actually do something which is going to make you feel good not rotten when you get to the end of it so, so I think we can all challenge ourselves if we're thinking have we got time I think the answer for most people is absolutely you just need to spend it in a slightly different way that's a good point as well because an organization could say let's have a challenge this year for our corp you know our corporate social responsibility rather than us just saying oh we're going to pick one charity how do we cause as much effect effect in our community and how are we doing that as individuals and challenging each other by well we've done this and i've done that you know mm. there's, there's there's a great sense of fun around that as well yeah. oh yeah a bit of competition always mm. helps, healthy competition <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. think from what you're saying nicola as well it's about having you know like any well-being offering you have to make sure you have lots of different ways that people can tap into don't you because one Absolutely. size doesn't fit all so we've talked Absolutely. a lot about the team volunteering but actually that might not appeal to some mm. people and if they can do something on an individual basis that may well be a far more benefit to them something they're more comfortable with um and and just being flexible in your offering in the same way that we are with you know we appreciate our teams don't use every aspect of our well-being packages for example absolutely but hopefully there's something for everyone everybody yeah I, I i mean this tailoring um is is such a common theme within hr now around benefits and services and 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 also um feedback um but i think where an organization is able to say to an individual you know maybe it's putting it out there into your your corporate um magazine your internal magazines or internal um websites what volunteering are you doing we'd be really interested to hear about that we'd like to you know a staff survey for example that that's part of the um overall staff survey what are you doing in your community we'd love to hear more about it and then you start to understand actually what is going on that you that that actually could be something that the organization could support in a different way and or enhance or um promote you know mm. um and, and how you could do that in a simple uh, directive way without interfering with what individuals are doing yeah. but just say we have a supportive environment in this workplace for what you do and and we think it's great yeah that's really interesting actually because this must be so much of this going on that we probably don't know about mm. but we would be keen to support if if we did find out about it um you know even if it's if it's not through a 
a formal charity, for example. So like you say, in your neighbour's shopping or things like that, just help generally helping others. Um, that's volunteering as much as doing the litter pick that we keep talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could hold a, a volunteering day at work and, and it's a case of that it may be that some, some of your um, employees volunteer to talk about the volunteering that they do um, and share that within forums that um, other employees get to learn about. Um, you know, you may have volunteering organisations come in or charities come in, but it, it's a day of volunteering. It allows people um, the opportunity to access it, to think mm. about it in a different way and potentially to say, actually, I'd like to do some of that or I do do this. And people go, oh, I never knew that about you. So there's yeah. a lot of sharing and, and, and value in doing something like that. Exactly. And cake. I wonder how many people in our, our organisation, Becky, are a, uh, a, a treasurers of society. Yeah. And the value that brings to the organisation is, is massive, isn't it? And I just, we don't, mm. we don't give that as much um, value as we should do, probably. You know that's our skill set and we're accountants and that's all probably a bit dull but actually they need that but it sounds like if we can do a better job of of making volunteering accessible to people mm. in lots of different ways that would be a real positive um, so so nicola i think one of the things it would if you've got any information around it becky and i recorded a podcast last week around mm. um gen z and some of the mental health challenges that specifically gen z are facing where, where do you know, have you got any stats around the workplace around mental health? Because we covered earlier in the podcast about what a positive impact volunteering, being out in nature, can have mm. around mental health. Mm. I think, in general, at the moment, the stats are saying that there's 18 million working days lost per year through mental health. Million. Yeah. 18 million. Yeah. In the just just in just in the UK. Yeah. So if you wow. were to think. I offer my employees the opportunity to go out into the work, out into the community, into the work, the fresh air, to do something that's community based, community focused, uh, allows them to to not feel they're in the office or in their job, but but interacting, sharing, learning, having some fun. That's one less of those days that are lost in productivity, and it's a positive impact. Yeah. So you think about the 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 spread out from that if somebody comes back to work energized and excited about what they've done externally but value what they've done and, and value that the employer's given that opportunity that that's a yeah. a ripple effect certainly i would say wow i mean that's uh, absolutely i mean it, it, there alone is a good reason to consider volunteering isn't it and and i was thinking as you were talking there nicola you also have the return to work interviews when people have been off um with sickness as well so so it isn't just the direct time which is lost of the person being off is it it's the knock-on management time as well oh, absolutely. so if, if we could if you know if we could reduce that by 25 percent it would have a disproportionately big impact on our businesses yeah I and mean, we know that the stats say that it's one in four employees have um a mental health issue at any one time it's the impact so, on the team as well isn't it yeah because you know, they're carrying the load often absolutely. aren't they if it's continual it's it's throwing that. ripples out in a pond, yeah. isn't it? It, it, it? Just cumulative. What could we achieve by doing something slightly differently? Yeah. We're not saying that we're setting out to to rid our organisation of of mental health absence or or for employees not to go off sick, but actually by just reducing maybe um, one person's yeah. ill health or five people's ill health, we will be be adding to our productivity. We'll be adding to our engagement. We'll be adding to um, just our brand as an employer of choice yeah and if we could come up with some sort of way of doing that maintaining that as well in terms of it's not just a one-off tick we've done it you know going back to the tick box exercise how valuable that would be if we could slowly gradually reduce that number of working days lost that is an astounding number Mark. <laughs> so so laura and nicola we're, we're now moving towards the end of the podcast thank you for your time now when we had our pre-meeting we left we left you with a couple of questions to ponder and think about so the first of those ones and i'm not sure who's going to take this so i'll throw it over to both of you <laughs> what three books or videos or films or podcast clips would you recommend that would enlighten our, our listeners and viewers um, around this topic of volunteering I have one um, which is local. Um, it's only just recently started. It's Evolve Workplace Wellbeing, um, which is UEA um, uh, projects and research. 
but they've created a tool which is freely available from their website and they're they're talking to business um, owners um, business people about well-being in the workplace in their podcasts and I think there's some really useful tips and ideas from not only the podcast but also from their uh, website which I just thought would be worth knowing about mm. yeah brilliant well we'll definitely leave a link in the show notes to that I think it's worth checking out for people thank you based at the UEA is the Institute of Volunteering Research um, and they've done some wonderful papers um, videos that's all on their, their website and their YouTube channels um, and uh, a book all on sort of like volunteering the effects both sort of to, to communities to corporates to the individuals um, so if, if you're interested in, in the subject of volunteering that's definitely one to put uh, put on your list and it's downloadable as well so you don't have to physically buy it if you don't wish to brilliant well thank you and it's great to hear that that research is going on locally at the UEA which is um, the University of East Anglia based in Norwich so then moving on to the last question that we set you both uh, so what three pieces of advice would you give to an 18 year old Laura or Nicola so I think the the main lesson the main thing I would tell an 18 year old myself is um, don't worry it will come out all right um, there was too much worrying done at 18 and actually you know things work out all right surprisingly um also always ask lots of questions and be a pain in the bum good piece of advice although if you're on the receiving it's end, definitely it's with work, you on the second it? one <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah mark is one of those <laughs> brilliant though <laughs> thank you laura i think mine would be to um do things that bring you joy mm. I think there's a lot of, you know, sort of got to work, work, work. You've got to have a house by this age. You've got to be married at this age. You've got to have, yeah. you know, all these things that you must have. Um, and taking time out to do things that, that bring you joy is sometimes seen as not so much as a sin, but sometimes it's a bit sort of, hmm, why are you doing that? Why aren't you focusing on your career? Um, so mm. that would be definitely that one. Um, also focusing on, to focus on what you have, mm. not what, the next big thing like waiting for that holiday waiting for that pay rise waiting for that next job because i think when you have that mindset you're focusing in you're coming from a place of lack and i think that can be quite detrimental to your mental health and to have that sort of almost mm. daily like gratitude yeah. practice i suppose of yeah. thinking of the things that you do already have what you're grateful mm. for um can really give you a boost throughout the day um and yeah i think that's it i think that's my three i think that's brilliant very yeah. wise I, I love that i love that last point laura i mean how, how many people go through their lives saying i'll be happy when 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 yeah know, yeah well, yeah if, if you if you can't be happy today it's unlikely you're going to be happy when this new material thing happens to you isn't it you know it's so, so i think that's a great one yeah we, we could all learn a lesson from that i think we all slip into that at times if we're not careful Absolutely. it's almost it's, it's basically the materialistic world which we live in at the moment isn't it it's kind of driving us all to need the next shiny thing and yeah just taking stock and saying do you know what i'm happy today yeah yeah, yeah. if you remember Brilliant. three years like ago that. we were worried about having toilet roll <laughs> yeah yeah Con you know perspective yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, do you know, I've just watched a program on Channel 5 over in the UK with Dan Snow. I think it's called um, The Black Death. And when oh, you yes. start watching programs about that, you know, and, and, and it was like, I don't know, 50% mortality rate for the bubonic plague and 70% for the pneumonic plague. So 60% combined mortality rates, you know, and I, I'm not belittling what we've been through with COVID, no. but, but you're right. You never know how bad something could be. So it's, you know, let's, yeah, just, just find joy in, in this moment and today. Absolutely. So Nicola, Laura, thank you both so much uh, for talking to us today. We've learned so much about volunteering. I think we all knew or thought we knew about the benefits for us as individuals, but we've really explored all the different aspects of that, but also how um, as leaders in our businesses, we can really make the most of those opportunities for our people as well and, re and really work on the whole wellbeing aspect and, and what it could bring to our team. So thank you for enlightening us on that. Um, if listeners would like to reach out to you, how can they find you, Nicola? Um, either through the CBR uh, website or through Voluntary Norfolk's website. Um, CBR is listed as part of Voluntary Norfolk and my email address is on there. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And Laura, presumably your details will be on the Voluntary Norfolk website as well. Yeah, they certainly are. We've also got all our volunteering opportunities um, and all information on sort of how we can support organisations if they're looking to set up um, employer-supported volunteering programmes on our Get Involved platform. 
and that's getinvolvednorfolk.org.uk. Brilliant, thank you. And you can help with all those questions that might put us off otherwise getting involved, like have we got insurance or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Nicola, Laura, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really interesting. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So Mark, we, we talked there around lots of different aspects of volunteering and the benefits. As ever, we need to find our three key takeaways, um, particularly with regards to how we can utilise volunteering and really maximise the benefits for us as leaders. Um, so what's your first one? Yeah, thanks, Becky. I, I think, as you say, there was stuff coming out, which it certainly gave me food for thought about as a leader, how should I look at volunteering? You know, I think it's a good thing, but what what else did I learn? Well, the first thing I think was when, um, was when Laura and Nicola were talking around the fact that it can help people develop new skills. So, so as a leader, you know, my, my team going volunteering, they can develop new skills. It can be a team building exercise, but also they also mentioned about managers can spot things in their team members, but maybe they don't see in the ordinary course of business. So, so I think there's a lot we can learn about our people and help develop our people through volunteering. I think that was a massive takeaway for me. Yeah, take them out of their usual environment and and see different aspects to them, that kind of thing. Yeah, really powerful, I thought. My takeaway would be, um, I think it was Nicola said that, you know, people want to be respected, seen and heard and that volunteering really gives them the opportunity to do that. In the So in the corporate environment, if they, they're able to make um, suggestions, to get involved and to get out there, that makes them really feel like they are valued in the business um, gives them that opportunity so for me that's that's a massive one and we, and we know from our discussions in previous podcasts about how that's really something that people are wanting far more of in terms of what they're looking for in their roles as well and, it, and it's quite an easy one isn't it because you know there's certain things in business where it's harder for different level people to get involved in and make suggestions towards the business but this is something which is accessible to everyone in the business isn't it yeah and your third? Um, yeah, so the third one, it was the one around it's not just a tick box exercise. So if we're going to do it, you know, let, let's let's make sure it's congruent with our vision, our values, and whatever the volunteering is we do as a business, it flows through. So if it's going to help people come to our business and stay with our business, it's not just the cynical, well, we're doing CSR. People are like, do you know what? I want to. I want to work for this business. I want to stay with this business because everything is congruent from the vision, the value, through to the volunteering program. It all it all knits together, and I think just having that level of authenticity is so important. Yeah, you got to live and breathe it, haven't you? You can't just say it. You've got to actually do this stuff consistently, day in, day out. Exactly that. So, thanks, Mark. Three great takeaways there for us all to consider and think about in our roles as leaders. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. If you don't already, please follow us on your chosen platform. Rating us five stars on Apple and also Spotify really helps people find us too. You can find links to all the things mentioned today in the show notes, including links to our website and to our sponsors, Larkin Gown, Chartered Accountants and Business Advisors. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without them. Check out how their team of experts might be able to help you and your business. We will see you next week. And in the meantime, don't forget, be kind to yourself and boost your health, wealth and self. So Nicola, Laura, we've been talking about volunteering. When you have volunteered yourselves, there must have been some weird, funny things that you've done. I've, I've got one. Um, I was uh, volunteering as a class mum when my son was at school in, in the Netherlands when we were living there. And one day I was got asked to arrange for the class to be taken to um, a, a place where the circus was. And we were like, well, that sounds like great, great fun. So one of the children who had arrived at the school recently, her father ran a circus. The children got to go to the circus and actually meet a baby tiger. And I mean, how incredible to sit with a bunch of six, seven year olds and to have a baby tiger that you could touch. It was just the most incredible moment. I'm not sure we can offer that to our teams, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's setting the bar so high, Nicola. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it was just one of the most magical things ever. Oh. So when people say they want to do something volunteering with animals, I'm not sure that's what they're going to get. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any of those. No. Oh, well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Sorry if that wasn't the... <laughs>